Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Thunder Politics, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean sure Kimbalue in Abuja. Well, we're hitching closer by the day to the beginning of the commencement of the 2023 presidential campaigns, which is due to commence by the end of this month. And it looks so much that each day we move closer. The more that heat within the political space in the country, it appears the antecedents of the political gladiators are going to be used as a major tool for or against them in the, in the uh, run-up to the presidential election of 2023. And we're already seeing that play out, especially in the camp of the APC. The antecedent of the presidential campaign of uh, uh, Bola Tinubu, the uh, presidential candidate of Bola Tinubu, is already being used and being discussed. There's been a documentary that's been shown uh, in uh, major media platforms in the country, and that has gotten some uh, reactions, uh, raised a few controversies too, as to what exactly Bola Tinubu did. There are other references that have been made as to what other presidential candidates have done and whether or not you can trust them to hand over the destinies of over 200 million Nigerians to be led uh, from 23, uh, May of 2023. Balatinubu especially has come under uh, a very heated debate uh, across the land uh, from his supporters and those of his critics as to what he did when he was the governor of Lagos State and his political antecedent since 1999. In fact, he has been referred to as the father of a new Lagos. Tonight, we shall be discussing the APC, Bola Tinobu, and the presidential election of 2023. And tonight, to speak to some of the issues and the controversies that have been raised, is one of those persons that is perceived to be closest to Bola Tinubu. He was a commissioner under him uh, when Bola Tinubu was governor of Lagos State. And in fact, he's going to be handling strategic communications for the APC presidential campaign. He joins us virtually tonight. Is Mr. Dele Alake, who was a former commissioner of information in Lagos. Thank you indeed, Mr. Alake, for joining us, and it's good to see you. Let Thank us... you for having me. Thank you. Let's begin the conversation by uh, uh, getting off from what has become a major controversy. Now, uh, I'd like to ask you, is it factual to refer to Bola Tinobu as a father of modern-day Lagos? Uh, thank you very much, Shil. Um First of all, let me just lay a few uh, uh, parameters here uh, for us to ponder on. Nobody can deny the place of Bola Tinumbu in the scheme of modern Lagos. Now, I am personally very happy that that documentary has generated rave reviews and it, its devastating effect against the uh, opponents has been such that they had to now seek to denigrate it, to deride it, to, to attempt to debunk it very, very forcefully. But it has all their efforts have gone to naught. It has not achieved any appreciable impact at all because that documentary has been factual. I directed that documentary. There is nothing that that documentary said that Bola Tinubu achieved in Lagos that I did not personally witness. I was not uh, a happenstance around there. I was not, uh, I did not read about all those things. I personally took part in the conceptualization and uh, monitoring and execution of uh, many of those projects. So I speak with convictions. I speak with utmost integrity and credibility when I say that that documentary has been very factual. And it has been so fair because this documentary has been shown on your station at least twice. I would expect even those who brought the so-called uh, APC chieftain, and that is that's a misnomer. Tunde Bankantoni is not a chieftain of anywhere at all, but that is by the way. Now, those who brought him should have known 
when Tunde Bank Anthony was making false assertions that uh, Bola Tinubu, uh, Lagos had existed before Bola Tinubu, Bola Tinubu is not the father of Lagos. The documentary never said anywhere at any time that Bola Tinubu founded Lagos. Never. That is intellectual laziness and educational deficiency of which Anto Ant Ant Antonio, whatever his name is, is noted for. Now, there, I want anybody to bring out a specific aspect of that documentary and challenge its authenticity and its credibility. Is it the Babich, which you all have seen the video, the video clip of what the Babich was pre-1999, before Bola Tinubu dreamt of and, and envisioned what is now today standing as, as an icon in Nigeria, that is the Eco-Atlantic, that is converting liability into assets. It only takes a man of vision, it only takes a man of knowledge, and takes a man of courage to be able to accomplish that. None of the contending personalities for the presidency today can point to a vision that was translated into reality like that Eco-Atlantic. And that's not the only one. What about, is it the IGR that we mentioned in the documentary that is false? It, General Buba Marwa is alive. He took over Lagos at 300, he met the IGR at 300 million naira per month. General Buba Marwa appointed a, a consultant, Adekola is the guy's name, he appointed the Adekola consultant to grow the IGR of Lagos. He grew the IGR of Lagos up to 600 million mark by the time he left. So we took over Lagos at 600 million naira per month. And Tinubu said there was no way he was going to administer or to be a successful governor on 600 million naira per month. Don't forget that Lagos has the tiniest land area in Nigeria, and conversely and ironically, it has the largest population in Nigeria. And what that means is high concentration of population per square meter, per square kilometer, which we, they, they translates into urban blight, which translates into heavy, heavy social welfare pressures, undue pressure on even the government. So how could you run a state with 600 million naira? And in any case, the wage bill at that time, we had in 1999 over 48,000 persons in the civil service alone. The wage bill was almost up to 800 million naira per month, whereas the IGR was 600 million. So he said, and I quote him in the executive council that he was not elected to be a personnel manager. He was elected to be a governor, not just to be paying salaries, but to discharge civic obligations to the people and make life more abundant for the greatest number of the greatest people of Lagos State. So he put on his thinking cap and brought out what is today uh, uh, known as ABC, the Alpha Beta Company, that instituted the mechanism that started growing the IGR of Lagos. The first thing he did, and it was the first in the history, Tinubu is a trailblazer in so many areas and on so many fronts that nobody that is contending for presidency today can match that, that kind of antecedent and track record. He now started blocking the leakages in the system, blocking the loopholes. The first thing he did was to bring in technology, to introduce technology into the payroll system. And that technology company was called Oracle. And I recall vividly, and people are alive here, yeah, except those afflicted with amnesia or selective amnesia or, or, or downright mischief who would choose not to acknowledge it. When he brought the Oracle into the payroll system, believe you me, Sheung, the very first month, it meant that all civil servants were to go for biometrics. The civil service resisted it. They, many of them are still alive. They resisted, they resisted and said, no, nobody had ever thought of this. No governor had ever brought this to Numbu insisted. He said his knowledge as an auditor in the corporate world showed him that when the revenue is going down, there must be leakages. And the first point to start is plug the leakages, seal the leakages. So he insisted. 
the civil servants when they did all the uh, biometrics, we then discovered at the end of that exercise, the first month, 350 million naira was saved. We discovered Mr. Ekpe, Mr. Education, Mr. Omosheton Omolo, on the payroll that never existed. We discovered a full complement, a full school with full complement of staff from principal to head teachers to tutors to non-teaching staff on the payroll that never existed in life. And that was how the IGR started jumping and jumping. And then with the mechanism of Alphabeta, they did not increase taxes. What he did was to widen the tax net. And the IGR, by the time we were leaving in 2007, the IGR had jumped, was nearing the 7 billion mark. That's incontrovertible. And that same system, that same mechanism that he instituted is still in place till today. And other governors have touched him. All right, so, Mr. Alake, yeah. And as of today, yeah. the IGR is hovering around the 50 billion mark. Okay. So, so how, can anybody, how can anybody in his right senses deny that? Okay. Not to talk of courage. No, there, 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 policies, there are a few issues. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about electricity. Mr. Alake, just a moment. That Nigeria is going, doing today, IPP. He pioneered it. He blazed the trail. So we are la, la, let's take the issues one after the other. Courage all right. Yeah. So it, it does look to me, just a moment, it does look to me that the APC and the Bola Tinobu camp will be using much more of his uh, uh, track record when he was governor as a tool for campaign going into 2023. So we'll take it one after the other. And tonight we'll be hoping to get some clarifications from you since you know so much about uh, Balatinubu as governor of Lagos and, in fact, as him as a person. You mentioned something which a lot of Nigerians would like to also to get clarification on. Who owns Alpha Beta Company? Alpha Beta Company is not owned by Tinubu to the best of my knowledge. Now, you are a reporter. You are a journalist. You are supposed to do your investigation. Go to the corporate affairs company in Abuja. Find out who owns Alpha Beta. Let me also use this as, a, as an eloquent example of how Nigerians, the, the, the penchant of Nigerians, for always want to pull someone down. Now, Alpha Beta, is it the ownership of Alpha Beta that is of primus importance, prime importance, or, or the achievement, the objective? of Alpha Beta, is it meeting its objective? So those who are crying foul about ownership and alluding to the ownership of Alpha Beta, they are simply jealous, envious. These are people who are mentally lethargic, who cannot think up of ideas and mechanisms to institute enduring legacies. So whoever does it successfully becomes a target of attacks, of animosity. That's what's happening. And don't, don't, you journalists should not also pander to the whims and caprices. What is the objective of Alpha Beta? Is it meeting it? Is it surpassing it? If it's not meeting it, then you start raising questions. So what is the issue about ownership? Now, if you really want to know the ownership, you go to the Corporate Affairs Commission and get it and reveal it to the whole world. So all this back and forth is the same thing they said that Ashwaji owns Oriental Hotel. I've never seen more a more ludicrous, ludicrous, silly beer parlor rumor mongering that has been elevated, even by supposedly knowledgeable people, supposedly educated people, and supposedly people with where with all who have all the all the machinery of investigating and discovering the truth. The fact that the Oriental Hotel is owned by the Wemco group. The Wemco group, they are on Wemco Road in Ogbagea. They've been in Nigeria since the late 50s. They own Jemco, Wemco, Nuko, all in Ikeja. They own Omo Wood in Ijebode. They own Porcelain Wares in Abelkuta. They own Ibafo Steel near Pond, one of the largest coal steel rolling mills in, in Black Africa. They've been in Nigeria for the old Golden Crown Chinese restaurant on, 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 on Tam uh, Groove. In fact, today, if you go to Oriental Hotel, 
if you were the ones that if you were if you were patronizing golden crown in those days you today you will see the same stewards the golden crown right now in oriental hotel is the tongue family they are family friends of the current awujale of ijebode and i don't know how they came about with this by Ashiwaju because it was Ashiwaju who commissioned Ashiwaju and Fashola caught the tape. I recall vividly because I was there. They caught the tape of that hotel because that hotel was built in the, during the tenure of Ashiwaju. And how come? It was the late Ahigbe, Mike Ahigbe, in 1987 or 1988 that allocated that land to the Wemco Group. 12 long years before Ashiwaju dreamt of becoming governor. And people should please subject things to critical analysis and not don't just assume rumors, accept rumors, hook, line, and sinker, and propagate it and adumbrate it. Let us borrow ourselves some sense. Oriental Hotel, is, Ashiwaju does not own a cover. In fact, let me tell you further, all the banks, all the banks that the Oriental Hotel people use. They know who the owners of Oriental, Oriental is. If you want to know your father's uh, state of well-being materially, go to the banks. It's the banks that will tell you if your father actually owns that your house that you think Ms. you Alake, own. Mr. Alake, uh, if, can you hear me? All right, yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, you are a, a very respected uh, journalist, uh, a very senior one at that. And right. when I'm asking questions, I, 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 I mean, I don't expect that you take it personal. I'm asking questions. And it was a no, one straight no, away question. I'm not just taking it moment, personal. I'm, I'm used, only responding no, just for moment, you. Mr. Alake, if I may no. land on my thought. Now, the thing is, I'm used by now to when a journalist asks a politician a question, you then go after the politician, I mean, the journalist, to say, uh, you <laughs> no, then bring out no. the issue of investigative journalism and all of that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you, you yeah. work on the defense when I ask a very simple question, unambig unambiguous, that who owns Alphabeta? I mean, that, yeah. answer, that question could have derived just a sentence answer, which you went no. on and you got defensive. You've not answered the question. And the, no, in fact, no. the first question I asked you on the program, just a moment, uh, the, let, and I'll go back to the first question. Is Bola Tinubu the father of modern Lagos? Let's take it one after I, the other. And let, let's I, did, I, did, I did answer you. I said there was nowhere in that documentary, if you recall vividly, that that documentary stated that Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu is the father of Lagos. No. The documentary, in fact, and I'm surprised, and I keep saying that this thing was shown on your station. Twice. But, no, no, no. Uh, so now, uh, I made reference yeah, to that exactly. documentary. So, so uh, therefore, as, uh, that as one like, of those premises that people have made. But the question is, it's a general perception, and it's being perceived as though Bolatinobu is the father of modern Lagos. From the Bolatinobu camp, is Bolatinobu seen, titled, and referred to as a father? Of modern Lagos. No, 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 he is not referred to as a father of modern Lagos. He's referred to as a pathfinder of modern Lagos. Pathfinder, not the father. You can't say anybody is the father of anywhere, anyway. Not even our revered sage, Awolowo, was the father of uh, modern Ibada or modern Western region. No, but Awo in his epoch in his area, was a pathfinder of modern Yoruba land. Tinumbu, in his own era, was a pathfinder of modern Lagos. All right. And why how do said. you say people are modern, yeah. I mean, uh, pathfinders? Because of their achievements in their tenures, uh, in right. their epochs. That's that, what that, Tinubu that is. That said, Mr. Alake. So, before, before I finish, let me, let me also use this opportunity to say a word or make a remark about this, your, uh, the alphabet issue, you say I didn't answer. I did answer. I said, I don't know personally because I have never thought of it that in, uh, thought it as in, important to me to know, to start verifying who owns alphabet. As far as I'm concerned, alphabet is doing the job for which it was commissioned. And that's enough for me. 
It is ensuring service delivery. So, it is delivery on its objective. That's enough. And I said, if you want to know, as a journalist, the commission is there. The Corporate Affairs Commission is there. If I also want to know, that's where I will go. I'm not going to be asking individuals, because even if they tell me whether he owns it or he doesn't own it, that I may not be able to verify that until you go to the right place. The uh, right quarters, the corporate affairs commission. Mr. Lucky, we are due for a break. Uh, we will come back briefly because I have a long list of issues that I'd like you to okay. speak to. Uh, and I wouldn't want us to dwell too much on. We, we've not even spoken more than two questions that I've asked you tonight, and we spent 20 minutes or so. Because I have a lot to say. Yeah, that's why I want us <laughs> to go straight to those issues. There are a lot of controversies, <laughs> and there are a lot of clarifications that you need to make. In fact, this okay. alpha beta matter, I'll perhaps throw you a few facts. If I ask a question, not that I don't know, I'm asking because that's my job to ask. We take a break, Mr. Lackey, and when we come back, more on, about Bolatinubu, his antecedent, track record, and the path to the presidential election of 2020. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, Mr. Dele Alake, the Director of Strategic Communications of the Bola Tinubu APC Presidential Campaign Organization, has been speaking with us virtually. He was a Commissioner of Information uh, during the Bola Tinubu uh, time as Governor of Lagos. So I asked you uh, the question about Alpha Beta. I'd like us to move quickly so that we can get into other issues. You also said there are a lot that you need to left off, I mean, leave off your chest as far as Bola Tinobu and the presidential campaign is on a, a, a concerned. Um, there are a lot of controversies. And the uh, uh, alleged owner, because that case, I'm not sure, has been taken out of the courtroom. But the former MD of Alpha Beta are uh, taking Bola Tinobu to court. What was that all about? Well, quite honestly, you, you, you did say something just now. You said the case has not been taken out of court. So I am not about to go into a case that is sub -judice. Once a case is in court, it is pure protocol, judicial protocol, that you do not make comments on it, or it is, it is adjudicated upon or disposed either way. So I will not be able to make any comments as it is sub -judice. I was an editor for 10 years. So I know the implications of that. I'm curious, so Mr. Lackey, to, though, uh, because that. if you were a commissioner of information and you were talking right. about an organization that helped from the words you used, Lagos, to achieve the incremental uh, development of its IGR. And this is right. uh, the man who is linked to the ownership of Alpha Beta had come out to say uh, that the former governor allegedly has, had concealed his ownership and control of the firm for f alleged fraudulent reasons. And I'm wondering why you did not know or bother to find out uh, the person who owns an organization that is so pivotal to the administration you worked for. I told you on the issue of ownership, if that's what you're asking, that I as a person, when I have an equipment that is working, it is achieving its objective. I do not bother my head about extraneous issues surrounding that equipment, as long as it is delivering the service for which it is meant to deliver. So Alpha Beta, as far as Lagos State uh, Revenue Generation is concerned, has been delivering on its mandate. So, so <laughs> why should I start bothering my head about who owns what? It is only if it was taking money out of the coffers of Lagos State and it is not delivering on its own part of the bargain, then I will start having issues. I will start nosing around. But if none of that is happening, why should I bother my head? I should even take advantage of the service that that 
equipment, that mechanism is delivering to further deliver the goods and services to the people of Lagos State. That should be my watchword. That should be my objective. Not the not who owns it. All right. And as per the, the, and as per the uh, issue that you said that somebody has taken somebody else to court and all that, you said it, and I'm repeating that the issue is in court. I am not, I am not give, giving my experience in these matters. I'm not going to double into a matter that is sub to this. It is, a, it is an abuse of privilege. And in fact, it is not, it will be frowned upon by the judicial uh, So, Mr. Lake, let's, I'm not going let, to do that. Let, let's move on quickly to other issues. I'd like to okay. also know, because it's out there, some of these issues we are discussing tonight are perhaps not the first time you are hearing them. Can you tell us, what would you say is the source of wealth or how Mr. Bola Tinubu, your principal, makes his money? Thank you very much. Now, for, for me to answer that judiciously, I have to go back to how the man I knew him to have been spending money and to have been wealthy ever before he got into office. And I'll give you an example. When in 1991, he was going into politics, making his foray into politics, he contested the senatorial election, Lagos West, and won. And you and I know, and in fact, most Nigerians know, that contesting elections in Nigeria is not a child's play. Poppers don't contest elections, more or less. I mean, how much more senatorial elections? Poppers don't do it. So he must be a man of some means. So he contested. In fact, before then, he had been contributing to political organizations. The primrose or prime rose of whatever, how they call it. Alaji Kola was saying he's still alive. He had been making contr political contributions towards causes and all that before he himself took up the gauntlet and went into the Senate. Now, his election, the, his, his election result, he pulled the highest number of votes nationwide in that senatorial election of that year and became a senator in 1992. Now, fast forward, 1993 started. We started in June 12. He was with the Yaradua Caucus, the People's Front, of, within SDP at that time. He was also funding. He was in the pauper. So, then June 12 came the, with the attendant uh, annulment of the results and the plunging of some of us who are in, 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 in the in, in the fire fire uh, I mean in the front line as it were plunge ourselves into it and he did with remarkable justice with unflinching support and energy at his disposal and financial commitment as well. And, and I make bold to say here today that even after he went through all the vicissitudes, all the harassment, all the oppressions, his house firebombed, he was uh, in detention at Alagbo for a while. I used to go and visit him there because we were still, uh, we were still carrying on operations of, uh, of anti-military operations, of activities to de the the, the, the the election results and fighting for, for, for the restoration of the 2012 election outside, he was still directing and giving instructions, even in detention at Alagba. And he was still spending money. And all of this years before he got into, into, go, into government as a governor. In, and after that, when he was declared wanted dead or alive, he had to take the now famous Nadeko route out of Nigeria and found landed in that, Mr. Lake, you know, uh, because in there are London. also some denials. All of this is so, to establish. Yeah, yeah. All of this is to establish the fact that this man has been spending money and wealthy Good. before he ever got into office. So, got so because there are so, there, are, there are been why denials. Should I, why should I? Okay, okay, just a moment. If I may put a question in, Mr. Lake, uh, there have been denials as to which companies Mr. Tinubu owns and which he doesn't own. Since you're here and you know uh, yeah. so, just so much about him, can you tell us which of uh, the companies, because your opponents are already talking about 
the source of wealth of their own candidate and how they make money. If you can tell Nigerians tonight, what companies or what source of wealth or how does your principal make his money? Because now these questions are going to be asked over and over again. If you can just clarify some of these issues. One, two, three, four. Which of the companies does he own since you said he doesn't own these or own that? What I know is that right from his days in the corporate world, he has been trading in stocks. And he himself said so. Even in foreign currency, he has been buying stocks and, and bonds and all of that. I'm not a finance person, so I'm not going to be knowing or, or be interested in the nitty gritty of it all. No, I am not a finance man. But I know that he has been trading in stocks. And I do know, I know that when you trade in stocks and you are a finance person, you know how to juggle the stock market and all of that. Those who are adept at it, they know what I'm talking about. They wouldn't start questioning how he made his money from stocks. He was buying stocks of blue chip companies and all of that. And he was making money. And he was spending money. And I said that he has been doing all of this years before he got into profit. Now, why people are saying that uh, are querying the source of his wealth is because he has been governor of Lagos, a successful governor of Lagos, a successful politician, even after office, and is the, about the only one of the class of 1999 who is at that enviable height, political height today. So he's bound to attract all of these negative politicians. I mean, so you've... Uh, is this, so okay, so you mentioned stock, not, stock, stock trading. Yeah. Is that the I only thing that you know companies. majorly that he, he gets in money blue from? blue chip companies. That is immaterial. So in blue chip companies. Does he have stake if in some of these blue the chip companies? Are they operating in Nigeria? Or where uh, can we link them to? Are these things I verifiable? Said, I did say that in foreign, in foreign, I mentioned in foreign, if you, if you can recall vividly, I said in foreign at that time. And if you were to be making all of those I mean, buying stocks and making money in foreign. You know what it means in Naira terms. So let us not overflog uh, issues that are... Look, it, and I told you, all of these things are, are being adumbrated and propagated simply out of envy, simply out of the desire to pull him down. We call it a PhD syndrome. Pull him down syndrome. If you, if you cannot match him, you pull him down. That is the bane of the of, of, of African development, particularly the Nigeria variant. Yeah. So he, that is it. So he now, made his they, money they, they, well so before he got into office. I think what is important for Nigeria really is to know that this man was not a pauper before he came into government as governor. Unlike some others. So unlike but, but some others. Mr. Alake, you have not been able yeah. to tell me tonight. Uh, which company he owns that operates on the shores of Nigeria, aside the fact that he said he trades in stock? What's, what's my business going about the company that he owns in Nigeria? If you are, if tomorrow you become like uh, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, why should I be bothering about the company's role as, as long as it is not proved that you have taken uh, the money of of your state or whatever you know uh, company you work for that you've stolen that money if it is not proof and it's, you are not indicted by any court of law why should i now be bothering my head it is an extraneous issue and it is like i always say pandering to the whims and caprices of those who are jealous and extremely envious suffering from och obsessive compulsive hatred Mr. Mr. Alake, <laughs> the day you decide to run for president or governor, your life, yeah. everything about it will be thrown under the spotlight. Sh yes, will shine and, and light explanations will that be That is what public office is about. Now, I mean, yeah. let, let's move swiftly because I have about two questions. Okay. I can't go in all of those issues. We can't delve into campaign matters tonight, unfortunately, because of oh. the rules guiding uh, the, the, um, the campaigns. We are not yet in that okay. period. Now, okay. two questions that I'd like to ask you. One, is this controversy about his uh, identity, his real name? 
And I'm asking this question for you to be able to officially come to uh, the public and enlighten Nigerians, if you may, if that's the right word to use, and clearly state what the real issues are. Even the public domain, there is a lot of confusion as to his real identity. Perhaps he had some other names, and um, his origin, his background, his real parent. Give Nigerians an idea or clarification in that regard. Yeah, thank you for that question. Now, let me tell you point blank that his name, as far as I know, is Bola Ahmed Tinumbu. Now, if anybody else has another name that I'm not aware of and has proof of that name, let the person come forward. So many things since 1999, so many issues have been raised concerning his origin, concerning his name, and all of that. And some names have been, you know, blown out, uh, out there, put in the public domain, uh, uh, like I would say, but nobody has come to prove or show any evidence of those names being his biological name or of, of some people being his uh, parents outside of those he says are his parents. Now, if you must allege, you must prove. You can't just allege and then go away and assume that everybody else will be as uncritical in thinking and assume it and take it and hook, line, and sinker. No. If you allege, you must prove. If, if Bola Tinubu is not his name, what's his name? How do you now show us evidence, documentary evidence, that this is the name that Bola Tinubu was given at birth and not Bola Tinubu? As long as you can't come up with that, as long as nobody, at least since 1999, 23 years, nobody has come up with any evidence, any contrary evidence, that his name is not Bola Tinubu. So what do you expect me to say to that? But to dismiss it as the rantings and, and uh, 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 rantings of nabobs of negativism, nothing else. There's nothing. You must. His, his origin. Some say uh, he's not a Lagosian. He's uh, from uh, Iraqi genocide. He's from uh, Oshogbo in this. He's from that. It's, what's my business with all of those ones? How how does that affect the quality of the man's brain? Yeah. So uh, what, what, what we are concerned, okay, what, what about? Is, how does that, those who, let me now give you some examples. Bill Clinton, President Bill Clinton. Clinton was not even his father. Clinton was his stepfather. Through you, I want to enlighten and educate those who think that all of these things are material. They are not material. It is the stuff that the man is made of. The hood does not make the monk. It is the stuff that is upstairs of the monk that makes the monk. Even some say he didn't go to a primary school, he didn't go to a secondary school, he didn't go to this, this, this. I went to Chicago State University in the year 2000 when this thing first broke. And I, called, I went to this, uh, the dean's uh, office, dean's student affairs. I was shown the yearbook. I saw his name. I saw his picture, he had a big afro then, but his face was unmistakable, unmistakable. You couldn't. So, so I saw uh, that with my own eyes. And then the issues said, are coming okay, up. Let me now tell if, you just that. a moment, Ms. Ms. Alake, if these issues are coming up, it's because, uh, you know, when you're coming to public uh, life, there are a lot of things that you also need to lay bare and lay plain on the table. Um, uh, yes. For those who are researching, um, the, uh, the credentials submitted by your principal, uh, obviously there was no primary school certificate and all of that. And there are inferences that on his primary school certificate was um, an alleged name of Amada Ogunere. I'm very sure that you perhaps are not hearing that for the first time. Is there any linkage? Was there any change of name in, uh, in the early stage of his life? Before I answer that, let me ask you, have you ever seen a document showing his name and certificate as a model, whatever? Have you? Or you heard? 
Just like people keep saying, we heard, we heard, we heard. Rumor mongering. Nobody has ever shown any document like this to say, this is the certificate with Amoda, whatever. Nobody. And she, I always say that Nigerians should subject things to critical analysis. I'm not saying that people should not carry rumors because in a political environment or political game like this, oh, opponents must dig anything, any debt to throw at you. But the point is, he who alleges must prove. You must show documentary evidence. There is none, Sheung, except you are telling me you have seen one. I haven't seen one. Now, the issue of primary school that you just mentioned, thank you for that. Now, let me clear the air today. Sheung, I know if you are not old enough, and this is not an aspiration or a slur on you, this is just a statement of fact. If you are not old enough, I'm sure you have people around you who are old enough to know that in those days, when people were indigent, one, schools were not as plentiful as many as we have today. Two, a lot of people were indigent and could not even afford the school fees to go to formal institutions. And at that time, a lot of people did read at home and pass their exams. And today, I can name you professors who never went to secondary school, who passed their exams from home, reading from home. Uh, let me even shock you for that. The Queen of England, that the whole world is paying obeisance to today, she never went to any formal school, not elementary, not high. Go and research it. That's the Queen of England. And she's been the most talked about monarch in the entire world in the last 70 years. It is not the hood that makes the monk. Bola Tinumbu should be commended for pulling himself up by the bootstraps from nothing. Mr. Alake, we're totally out of time uh, that we allotted for the conversation with you. But just in 30 seconds, yeah. Nigerians have a lot of... Uh, expectations and hopes on who becomes the next president and they will yeah. ask the right questions the tough questions of the next yeah. leader of this country because they have the right to do so anyone who yeah. wants to lead over 200 million nigerians must be ready to answer the critical questions how yeah. fit is your principal for this job in terms of health what can you tell is nigerians fit? tonight Cheo, Cheo, well, Latinubu is Fit as a fiddle. His schedule of duties, his schedule of work has never changed in the last 30 years. And let me now give you a pretty cool example. Before the primaries and after the primaries, let's be honest to ourselves, which contestant, which aspirant before the primaries traversed the length and breadth of Nigeria like Bola Tinumbu, making consultations, seeking for votes and support? in spite of all this noise about his health. After the primaries, when he became candidate, which candidate has been traversing the length and breadth of Nigeria? Is that like and working yeah. as he does, he has seen. He's as fit as a fit do. All right, we're totally and out of time. He, he, he has more stamina okay. than the so-called uh, healthy people, I can assure you. Okay. Mr. Alake, thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, brace yourself up because more questions will be asked as we move closer I'm ready. To, the, to the day. And uh, please, next time, Bring it on. I'm uh, ready. Get, get those evidence <laughs> so that when you present them to Nigerians, <laughs> since you are a former journalist, so you will, to, before you cross to the other side. Thank you so much, Mr. Adelia Alake, for talking to us. My pleasure. I appreciate My it. pleasure. Thank you. Let's switch uh, gears now and speak about the People's Democratic Party, PDP. It doesn't look like the troubles within the party is going away anytime soon. It's a nagging headache. And in the past week, we saw the resignation of the chairman of the Board of Trustees, uh, Chief Walid Chibrin, and Senator Adolfos Wabara taking over as the acting chairman of the Board of Trustees tonight. A lot of controversies also raging within the PDP. Is that what the PDP need in terms of balancing has been asked on the other side? Um, 
let me introduce my guest so that we get the conversation started. I'm being joined by one of the chieftains of the party, Senator Akar Jeff. He joins us live here in Abuja City. Thanks so much, Senator, for joining us tonight. Thanks, sir, for having me. I've invited you on this program to talk about this matter. Perhaps this is the third time that we're talking about right. this. Why is it not going away? And when we think that the resignation of Senator Wali Jibre will douse attention, why is that not dousing the tension? Well, Sean, because this is politics. And in politics, there are no quick fix solutions to any problem, especially when we're talking about uh, leadership recruitment. You know, this is the season for leadership recruitment, and it's not going to be easy. Uh, you know, you can hear the, uh, the, uh, I was listening to the questions that you were posing to Dele Alake, and the eloquent no answers that he gave, for me, answered a lot. Okay, so leadership recruitment is not an easy process, and uh, it's sad. I feel sad personally as a, as a member of the PDP that things have come to this sorry pass. But it's not late. I've always said that at the end of the day, the biggest enemy of the PDP is not even the APC, because the APC has failed. You know, in the last eight years, or seven and so years, they have failed. So the, the biggest enemy of the PDP will be the PDP itself. And we have a big challenge there. So every day I go to bed and wake up, uh, I mean, very unsatisfied with the way things are going. Not to say that uh, things will not be resolved, but it, it, it's not going to be an easy thing. Uh, so, but the resignation that you refer to of the chairman of the board of trustees is, is one step uh, in furtherance to have, you know, finding a solution. Would that create the balance that is being sought from the other side? Well, I, I wish I had an, an easy answer to that question because uh, apparently, uh, even with the resignation, there are still questions being raised. So it's not going to be that easy, but thank God that the process is ongoing and everybody is sufficiently uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that nobody is being taken for granted. Everybody that has their own grievances, uh, their efforts to ensure that those grievances are looked into, which is, which is my satisfaction. Let me, let me allow you, because I like you to make it a party thing, and you are a member of NEC. Um, take a listen to Governor Sheyi Makinde. This is what he said. He was in Port Accord, uh, Port Accord in River State uh, uh, over the last week, uh, week, and this is what he said. If children are doing all of this, I think what Nigeria needs are children. And what I'll say to you is, uh, Aluta Continua, we will continue to fight for our space within PDP and we'll continue to ensure that what is right for our people is given to our people. Okay, that on one hand, I mean, that means there are those fact, leaders, governors of the party that are very much aggrieved. This is one part that I'd like you to really comment on. What Governor in some week has said uh, in relation to uh, the resignation of uh, Senator Wali Jibri. Take a listen to Governor Wike. If the presidential candidate comes from the north, that he will resign by the convention of our party, that the candidate of our party, the chairman of our party, will come from the south. When the North Central met in the house of Governor Balab Muhammad, the governor of Bauchi State, he said to them, when he made the caucus of the Senate, he told them that when we freeze our convention on a Saturday to Sunday, the, the, the candidate of the party, Came to see me in my house in Abuja on Monday, around 10, 10, 30 a.m. And that's what I don't like in this country. The candidate told me, I said, listen, I want us to work together. And then he said, look, I, you must go. I said, why? He said, because when a candidate comes from the north, the chairman will come from the south. And I'm saying, implement what you told me. What offense have I committed? What offense have I committed? All right. Senator, mm -hmm. you heard him there. Yeah, I did. Uh, the going or the ousting of Senator Ayu, how easy would it be for your party? 
uh, let me start quickly and answer what uh, uh, Makinde said. I I'm happy that in his statement, he was talking about finding a solution within the PDP. He never spoke, from my understanding of his uh, speech, not talking about uh, working against the, 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 you know, the PDP. He just wants things to be resolved within the party. That's a good sign for me, okay? As for whether you should resign or not, let, let me just say a thing or two about this demand that you... You know, I don't like it when, because of politics, you, you start to, you know, throw mud in, in, on, on people's character because of... Are you is somebody who could easily have been the president of this country or head of state of this country, if we remember, during the, uh, the, 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 the June 12 uh, debacle? He was then the Senate president, and when uh, Babangida annulled the election and the heat became too much, he was approached to take over. And he said, no, somebody won this election, announced the result, let him take over. He refused. And because of that, he was impeached. Okay? So somebody that could give up uh, heading this country because uh, of his own principle, let him not be... You see, leaving the chairmanship is not just to up to you alone. I'm a lawyer, and I have read the constitution of the party. If I you step down today, what will happen? The national, the, the deputy national chairman, not will still take over. If we are going by the constitution, if we are not uh, going by impunity, he will still take over. Okay? If if he's, if he, if that one steps down again, then it will go to the the, the 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 deputy chairman in the south. So it's it's not something that you just throw away. Like, so it will create a, a constitutional crisis for so the party. So it will create a, a a crisis that may be even bigger than what we have now. So it's something that should be negotiated. It's not something that. But why was it been? Why was it made a promise? If it looks like it was politically correct at the time, but it is legally or lawfully incorrect. Even now, if you speak to you, he's ready to the But it's not something that you leave and you leave the party in the crisis. It's something that you think uh, Senator Ayu is ready to go. He's ready to. You see, when he met with the when he met with the uh, uh, you know candidate, the the Senate caucus met with the with the candidate. And he, he reiterated that he is used to stepping down uh, for his principles. But this is not something that you say, okay, because I said this, I will just do it on my own. It has to be down and negotiated because a lot of things will have to happen. For instance, if IU goes to the, if the IU resigns and the thing goes to the south, is is with the national secretary still be in the south with all those positions in the south still remain in the south? So it's something that has to be negotiated before you leave. So uh, uh, when, when you make do, it look like... Do you like... think that this thing is about are you as a person other than his position being from the North Central? Well, I wish I knew the correct, the, the, the right answer. You know, it's more complicated than that, but at least the position that is, that is pushed in the public domain is that if I, the, 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 the problem will be resolved if you step down. It, it's more complicated than are you will step down but it has to be negotiated in such a way that the best, the party will not go into a deeper crisis. If it goes down, do, do you now have the national secretary and the national chairman in the south? If you have the power to change things and to resolve this, uh, this matter on a final note, what would you do? I can't do it alone. We, ha we still have to sit. This is what the constitution says. Are we going to go to a special convention and determine what should happen? Because that is the best that can happen in the short term is that we we'll call for a, national con a special national convention and even change the constitution of the party. Because if you go by the constitution, yeah. even if I use step down, it's still somebody from the north that will still be there. So it's a difficult one. It is. Uh -huh. But it can, it can be resolved. Senator Okaja, <laughs> thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Thanks for having me. But that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye-bye.